Everybody's ready. Good evening and welcome to the November 10th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate equitably. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair acknowledges the attendance of staff members, Jen, excuse me, Jen, Kevin, and Kristen, and always the assistance of Alyssa, Mark, and Amy. We have a full boat of commissioners tonight. Thank you for your dedication. And I'll remind you, um, you know, about commenting. Wait till I call on you, please. And all votes done by roll call. So when I call your name, state your name and your vote, even if you've made the motion in the second. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function at the appropriate time. They will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are located on the agenda. And as per Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 regarding COVID-19, this allows for full public participation. Therefore, if you'd like to be heard on a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I will call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled, be succinct, and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes each. Um, first up, kind of other business, just for anybody in the audience that wants to know, um, who we at 86 Water Street is being continued. Um, so you may not want to hang around if you don't have to. Next up, vote minutes. We don't have any minutes. Next up is re our request for determination of applicability. First up, DJ Boss and Deb Nez, 26 Associates Road, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to replace an existing brick patio with bluestone within the existing footprint. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, uh, <coughs> staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. I'll I'll second. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Uh, just a question, is this the same property that has got an art, um, order conditions for a rebuild? No, this property okay. is just having, it also is having work done on a small staircase um, on the beach, but it's not under okay. an order of conditions. Okay, just curious. The name looks familiar. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy? I felt her aye. Courtney? Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? All Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? I can read his lips. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Pat and I. Next. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Next up, Michael Rommel, 33 Davis Neck Road, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to remove and replant a privacy hedge. Mr. Newton? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Third, so move. Clap out or second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Black Felter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Hello, Hawks, aye. Peter? Walsh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was, uh, Pat, sorry about that. Nothing personal. Quite all right. Harris, aye. Steve? Pat. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Michael O'Brien, 87 Robinson Road, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to construct an addition and install a dry well. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. 
I felt her second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Uh, Betsy. I felt her aye. Courtney. Third aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Fellow Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. Thank you. It's unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Susan M. Gordon and Jimmy L. Wyatt, Jr., 56, T-Ticket Path, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to demolish an existing shed and to construct a new shed with concrete slab within the existing footprint. Mr. Newton? Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative to do under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Glad felt her second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Glad felt her aye. Courtney. Bird's aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Thank you. Next up. Joseph J. and Elise Ruther Prendergast, trustees, 75 Bridge Street, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to upgrade an existing septic system to add a new 500-gallon chamber. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Glad filter second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy? Glad filter aye. Courtney? Heard aye. Matthews aye. Kevin? O'Brien aye. Maury? Harlow Hawks aye. Pat? Harris aye. Peter? Walsh aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up. Timothy J. Doonan, 12, Worcester Court, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to construct a garage addition with an upper floor room in connection to the existing dwelling. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. And a question. Blood filter, second. What? So my question is, is this a floodplain situation? Yes, it is, Courtney. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Third aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Hello, Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Chappaquite Condo Owners, 545 West Falmouth Highway, West Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct a new deck and expand an existing deck. Mr. Newton? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. I felt her second. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. All right, that's it. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Heard aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Harlow Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up. Glenn and Judy Bell, 101 Allen Avenue, Falmouth, Mass., for permission to raise R-A-Z-E, an existing garage, and to construct a new two-car garage, construct two additions, remove and replace an existing deck, relocate an existing driveway, and prune branches from an existing tree. Mr. Newton? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard, so move. And I have a question. Well, I felt your second. 
And my question is, is this on a floodplain issue? Yes, it is. Thank you. You're welcome. How unusual. <laughs> All right. Betsy. Glad to try. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Benton, aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Modern Design Homes, 587 T-Ticket Highway, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to upgrade to a new Title V septic system. Mr. Newton. Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. A lot filter second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. All right, Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. I'm aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. <laughs> Next up are requests for hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. And as a reminder to the public, commenting is limited to three minutes, so I encourage you to stay Within the purview of this board, which are the rules and regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw, and how they pertain to a particular application, the chair reserves the right to stop any commenting that is disparaging or inconsequential to the hearing. First up, Daniel Celine and Chris Horiuchi, 95 Adam Ansett Road, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to construct an aluminum dock within Kunamesset Pond. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Jeff Ryder up as a panelist to present the project. I will be sharing my screen for Jeff um, tonight. And um, Dan, I see that you're in the attendees. If you want me to promote you as a panelist, please raise your hand. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen so I won't see it. Okay, Dan, I'm just going to promote you up real quick and then I'll share my screen. Thank you. Here comes Dan Celine. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Dan. Hello, and, Jen. Yep, and now I'm going to share my screen for you, Jeff. Sure, there's Dan. So either you're up, sir. Okay. Good evening. I'm uh, Jeff Ryder with BSS Design. I represent the applicant. The applicant is uh, Dan Celine and. Chris Horiuchi. So uh, this project is uh, a bit similar to uh, one we saw a few weeks ago with Dan and Chris as applicants. Uh, this is a, uh, a wood, wooden stairway down a, a steep bank with a uh, crossing of the, of the driveway road down there, but not with anything new, just crossing. And Ending up onto a uh, an area which is um, mainly a launch float. <clears throat> um, just want to go through a few things first before I get carried away. Um, the resource areas on this site is uh, land under a water body. We got uh, inland bank along the shore, and um, BVW. Um, the, so the project is, a, again, the stairway. You'll see down at the bottom is a plan and profile of that. It's a four foot wide stairway down. Then it transitions after you cross the, the, uh, the little driveway. It's only about eight feet wide. And then we got to go out onto this, uh, this pier section. And then we have a launch area for um, just mainly kayaks and, and canoes. And I think in your notice of intent there, at the end of the uh, narrative, there's a, a picture 
of the uh, the the, uh, the the dock and the uh, appurtenances. Um, so this stairway starts up at elevation 64 and ends at 26. So it's a uh, or in 38, and it's uh, so quite quite a drop there. And uh, so we fashioned this uh, stairway to go down that. You'll see that in the uh, profile. Um, changing uh, across the street, we again, we got a, the, the launch. And with that, we have a plan and profile as well. <clears throat> it's just a uh, continuation of the, of the other two. Um, launch, launch. Next is... Uh, this uh, is held up, it's sm smaller gauge. It's a one and a half inch uh, pipe there. You'll see it in the uh, plan view. You can see all the pipes on that for support. Um, the launch, uh, the surface is got a, what they call a non skid uh, sure step. And uh, that keeps you from uh, flipping into the water at the, uh, the launch. Uh, what else we got? Um, and so basically, again, the details show the, you know, speak for themselves. It's, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Stairway down and then a little short uh, dock with a launch at the end. Um, also, um, we got a letter today from a division of marine fisheries and uh, you know they, they they agree with us it's, it's a good project they just want to have one of those uh toy or toy um situations where we don't do any work between march 15th and june 30th and so that's uh basically it i have a few more notes but i think that's enough to get us started and uh i think dan would like to uh, pitch in at this point uh, I don't. I don't have a lot to to add. Um, I, I noticed that the staff has uh, has identified or or uh, you know uh, observed that the end of the dock is more than a hundred square feet. Um, I think that that figure includes the the kayak you know launching device, you know, which is uh, which essentially is a ramp. You know, the you know, similar to a slip, uh, you know that uh, that a boat might uh, occupy, you know, on a dock, and uh, but in this case, it's a it's a ramp that includes uh, you know a series of rollers that enables you to, you know, get in in and out of the water safely, you know, without getting wet, and and I think that you know one of the one of the uh, great benefits of of that uh, system in this case. Is that um, it? It moves the all the activity um, the, of getting in and out of the the kayak and such away from the shoreline and out on the end of the dock. So there'll be far less, you know, wear and tear, you know, on the shoreline. Uh, so I guess we're, you know, we're hoping that the commission will will see that that is a first of all benefit, but but also isn't really a an occupiable area of the of the dock of the dock itself but is is essentially you know the equivalent of a of a boat slip um but i'll uh leave that for you to discuss and and uh, draw your own conclusion Thank you. mr chairman do you want me to stop sharing uh, i believe so please thanks all on you jen oh Jeff, I have a quick question. Um, the DMF letter, because we haven't, I didn't see it quite yet. What species did they, um, because the, the 91 adamantit, that was April 1st to, or I think April 1st to June 15th. And now this one's March, March 15th, 15th to June 30th. Yes. The other one was alewife. Do they have herring on this one as well? Uh, alewife, uh, white perch, okay, and American eel. Hmm. Oh, okay, and, and blueback herring. Four of them. Okay, just seems odd that it, I mean the two properties are fairly close; they're adjacent. 
It was just a question. Um, okay, Mr. Chairman, the only thing the staff had was uh, Dan and I spoke about this. He came and showed me the the design. Um, I did mention at that time, Dan, with you that it did exceed that, and that's something the board ha would have to discuss. Um, a better picture of it is in your notice of intent application. If you give me a minute, I can probably bring it up for you if you want. Um, I can also bring it up if you want to share share the screen with me. Actually, Dan, that would be great um, to just kind of give them a visual of what type of yeah, yeah. system this is and see if they, you know, so they'll have a better understanding because it is, it does exceed your float size. Oh, here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is, this is essentially the end of the, end of the dock. Um, you know, and what I described is this as essentially the component that is equivalent to a boat slip is this, this uh, piece of uh, the dock to the right which essentially is a series of these red rollers that really enable you to just kind of paddle up onto the dock and to get in and out with the aid of, uh, you know, handrails and, you know, and such. Um, so, um, you know, I guess my, my question, what, what Jen and I discussed when I, you know, when I, when I came in to review this was, you know, whether this, you know, component would count towards the hundred square feet or, or if the commission might view it, as being the equivalent of a slip, uh, which on a dock at a at a typical dock or such as a saltwater dock, you know, wouldn't be, of course, counted towards that, you know, towards that square footage. Uh, so, um, you know, whatever you decide, we'll we will uh, adapt our plan. Thank you, Dan. If you would stop sharing, yes, please. Okay. Kevin, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, thank you. All right. Betsy, we'll start with you. Betsy, are you there? She's muted. Mute. Thanks, Jamie. No questions or comments. All right. Uh, Courtney. <laughs> um, so private ways, is, is that problematic in terms of who owns it and governs that? In other words, are you are you involved in that? Yes. Yeah, we are involved in that. Um, I, I can't speak to the legal issues there, but uh, Robert Ahmed is also a, a resident of this neighborhood and has been a trustee for the, the seller, uh, the fellow who sold the property to us. Uh, has advised me that there are no issues uh, related to our uh, our installation of a dock across the driveway. Yeah, my only issue would be, you know, when we're writing, when we're we're got a notice of intent, and you know, you've got a private way, and you're not the owner. Is there some need for permissions? That's all I. I yeah. otherwise the project's fine from my standpoint. I would say that I'm the only. I mean, our, our family is the only um, active user of the driveway. Yeah. Uh, it only serves our property, you know, so there shouldn't be any functional, you know, issues. Jen, do you have a, an issue? Yeah, with didn't that? you tell me there was an easement across there for you? I don't think it's an easement per se. When we were out on site? No, I, no, I didn't describe it as easement. I think it's just a, a, a matter of the deed. Um, which provides us, you know, the rights, you know, to to do what we're what we're, you know, looking to do here. Um, I I can have, um, you know, Mr. Ament, uh, you know, submit a letter to you, Jennifer, uh, you know, explaining this, if you wish, or 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 otherwise communicate with your office. When we were on set, though, you said something, maybe not an easement, but you said you had the deeded rights to put oh, a dock we have in. Deeded, yes, yeah, we have deeded rights. Okay, yeah. so that's, I think that's what we would need. Mm -hmm. What If the board um, wants that information, that would need to be provided. Yeah, I'm happy to submit a copy of my deed. Okay. Yeah. I have no other questions. All right. Mr. O'Brien. No questions. Thank you. Maury. 
Um, I just had two. Um, one was, are we? Do you have an issue with ice? Is this going to be removed, or s bubblers or something? Well, I, <clears throat> maybe Jeff could um, advise on this. My, uh, I'd be interested in installing a bubbler, uh, but I, I know that it requires power, you know, to the dock. Um, I'm not sure how that power would be. Uh, would be provided. Um, I'm not so just sim simply because it would have to go under the road uh, to to connect the dock. Um, and um, so, Jeff, can you speak to that? If is that feasible? Well, crossing the road is no no issue at all. But um, you know, going up the uh, stairway, we'd have to put some conduit. I wouldn't dig it in. We just connect, to the, connect up to the stringers and then uh, it'd be pretty straightforward, actually. The, the crossing of the driveway would, you know, you do, do that by hand pretty much. And, yeah. You know. um, can I just say then that um, we, would, we would take it, we, we would uh, put it in in the spring and take it out in the fall until which time as, as a power could be provided because there would be a possibility that we would put in the dock um, uh, before we built the staircase, um, because we could simply walk around the the lot, you know, via the driveway, you know, for access in the meanwhile. So, so at, at a time when we built the the stairway, uh, then we would provide power that would be required by the bubbler. I also think um, you might want to look into, I've seen them um, in a few places that they have solar ones that they're oh. like little black rings that go around the base and they're, the, the black oh. alone keeps just enough ice away and they're also solar so they can heat up. They actually use them in fish ponds as well. So you might want to look into that. It could yeah, be thank you for Yeah, thank you for that information. Good idea, yeah. That was all. Thank you very much. Huh? What is that? Somebody's phone. Answer machine. Nobody's going to own up to it. <laughs> All right. Pat? I have no questions. Thank you. Peter? I have a question. Uh, on the drawing, it shows a landing cross section. And is that on the water side of the road or the step side? Uh, that's going up up to the steep slope. That's uh, on the landward side, and um, it's it, it just. I think it does say uh, landing cross section. So there's three landings on the stairway down, sort of break up the pitch, and. Uh, you know, that's that's what it says there on the section. It's on okay. the upper side. Uh, it says uh, the type of wood on the handrail and stiffener. It I don't see any type of wood for the posts specified. Um, well, it's it's usually uh, something like, for instance, fir. Or Port Orford cedar, those would be two choices I'd use. Um, and, and that type of wood has preservative in it. Or? Peter, are you talking about the 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 post for the staircase or the post for the dock? Because he has on the plan that the steel post he has steel posts on the dock. I, I'm talking about the land, the step. The land, okay. But there's no restriction on that, is there? Well, there, there was a question that, that I kind of glazed over there real quick. Um, let's see. Oh, the, 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 there's no there's natural uh, preservative in Port Orford and fur, so that would that would be a choice. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if we could use. Uh, we wouldn't use CCA, but maybe some of the ACQ stuff if that's so, possible. So you wouldn't use CCA wood. No, no. Okay. That's okay. a marine product. That, that's my question. Thank you. Almost okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Steve? 
Um, no additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. My question or comment is about the hundred feet on the on the end. Um, are we? I don't really have a problem with the with the paddle up section, but is that going to create a, a precedent for us, Jen? Um, I mean, we could we could write it that the part of it is a roll away kind of slip for the boats. I mean, that's something you'd have to deliberate on. Um, okay. I mean, it, it, I mean, we could just make findings that that that's part of the boat slip, I, I guess. Um, you know, because it is acting like a slip, but then are there going to be kayaks like tied up and floating in the water? Dan, no, you're just going to have that one kayak on there, right? Well. And you know, there might be a rack, you know, that would also be on the, that would just be an attachment to the dock. I mean, those are available, but I, I just want to, yes, all, all the, all the kayak storage would be on the dock. Um, and because I don't want any storage on the land, really trying to minimize, you know, the activity on the shoreline and, uh, and on the road. And there's really no space for storage. So, so part of the thinking here is is just to provide a dock that enables us to, you know, to keep the kayaks on the dock and and uh, you know just not not require us to look anywhere else for storage or or uh, installation. Okay. All right, Jen. Is there anything in the public chat function? Not for this project, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, Jeff or Dan, is there anything else you want to add? No, thank you very much. Uh, I think I'm All pretty right. good. Thank you. All right. If nobody has any other comments, I'll entertain a motion. Make a All motion right. to close close the hearing and take it under advisement. Go ahead, second. second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All right. I'm taking the vote, Betsy. Glad felt her eye. Courtney. Heard aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks aye. Pat. Harris aye. Peter. Walsh aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next up, Paul F. and Annette C. Alphen, the Alphen Falmouth Realty Trust, 119 Childs River Road, East <clears throat> Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise R-A-Z-E, the existing single family dwelling, and to construct a new single family dwelling, to install mitigation plantings, and to upgrade to a new Title V septic system. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am promoting Tom Bunker up as a panelist, as well as Nick Crawford. All right, where's Mr. Bunker? Come on, Tom. Here I am. Uh, don't be shy. Come on in. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You know, water's warm. Uh, my computer's working a little slow tonight, so uh, I was. It was a little. Took a little time. Anyway, yes. Um, uh, my name is Tom Bunker, uh, BSS Design, and we prepared this plan with the help, of course, of Genic. Uh, studio and Crawford Land Management, um, and so we. Uh, I'll get right into it if I may share my screen. Please do. Okay. One. Th I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I'm also going to promote up the the applicant. He wanted to be promoted as a panelist, okay. and I can't do that while Tom is sharing his screen. So okay, I'll I'll stop. Yeah. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. No 
Oh, a team okay. player. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Alvin. There's two El Paul Alphans, so I'm going to promote both of them. I don't know if one's just a phone or not. Um. Okay, Tom, you can share. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um. Okay, this uh, first view is the uh, GIS uh, aerial photo that I'll just briefly show. It's on, uh, here on Charles River Road, it's number 119, surrounded by houses on both sides and across the other. This is, uh, of course, Charles River, uh, the body of water. And you can see there's a, a house in the uh, pier that they have on their property. And uh, <clears throat> back off a little bit there. So the uh, resource areas we have uh, is listed in the uh, staff report. It's easier to read than mine, my narrative. Um, we have uh, Land under a water body being Child's River, but it's it's not classified as a river. And here it's just a, a tidal tidal inlet, so it's not subject to the R Riverfront Act. We have a salt marsh uh, along here at the, the base of the riprap, the stone rip seawall here. Uh, this is all in flood zone up to this purple line here. It's uh, flood zone AE elevation 13. Here, this uh, steep slope going up is uh, steeper than four to one. So the, the, uh, the, the, the flood zone is just about at the top of the bank, but the uh, coastal bank go, does go a little bit higher up to the point of where it uh, is, uh, flattens out. So you can see that's just at elevation 13.4, 13.5, a little bit higher up here, it gets up to uh, up close to elevation 15, the, the, the coastal bank does, that is. And we have uh, the uh, land subject tidal action, 50 foot zone A, land or water body, 75 foot zone A, salt marsh, 100 foot zone A. And so that zone, last zone A, covers almost the entire lot. And then there's a uh, land subject to tidal action. That was a, a typo there. It's a zone B, not a zone A. Um, here, of course, the coastal bank has 50 foot zones A, which is yeah, right here, coastal bank zone A. And then, of course, the total zone B for the coastal bank is halfway across Trouds River Road. So this lot is small. Um, just uh, looking for the uh, lot size here. Uh, there it is, yeah, only 9,800 square feet. So it's not very deep and it's all within the uh, uh, A or B buffer zone of various resource areas. So there is a, a, a stone uh, seawall down here up to about elevation four or five, uh, a, a licensed pier with the uh, public access stairs on both sides, uh, stone steps going uh, up, up or down, whichever way you look at it, the bank into this location. And there's another little bit of a wall along the, the top here, a uh, little uh, concrete retaining wall of some sort. And uh, the deck, which was uh, added in a uh, notice of intent, I think that was in 95, that, that deck was added. And, uh, and we have the house, uh, driveways, there is a little septic system squeezed in here that's done uh, around uh, 1995. And uh, it is, uh, the air is directly around the house. Well, there's also a shed and, and uh, some stepping stones going across here and driveway, but otherwise the area around the house, directly around the house is all lawn, um, but there's along both sides, 
and particularly on this bank, a lot of uh, um, the invasive uh, species. I had a nice picture of it here. Where, where is that now? Is it very there? So you can get an idea of that bank, the stone steps going down, and the uh, vegetation that we have going on here. It's, uh, um, yep, there, whoops, too close. There, there's the bittersweet growing in there. Nice, uh, nice berries at the time I was there. But it's also uh, down at the bottom, there's some of the native plants. And over on this north end, there's a, a stand of sumac, which I assume is a native sumac. But you can see also is English ivy here. And if, if I had the other picture looking the other way, this uh, um, corner of property right in here is uh, the bittersweet is coming up along the property line here also. Um, so a major part of this project is what Nick will discuss uh, with the uh, vegetation restoration project on the bank. So the house uh, is moving away from the water slightly, about a foot and a half to two feet. You can see this green area of colored in. Um, <clears throat> I outlined the existing house a little bit in red, and then the green line, kind of Christmas colors coming up like this. Uh, and then the garage is, the, the, the increase in size is toward the street. Um, there, there was a shed right in here that's being taken down and the actually the driveway used to come further down uh, down on the lot um, and that's that came down to this zone A and so the driver is actually being shortened here because they're adding a garage which there is no garage now um, so staying about much the same uh, the house is a is a, a, a little bit bigger, uh, but the, uh, the the mitigation calculations come out to there's a, a small uh, increase in the zone B, uh, mainly the, the <clears throat> increase in the zone B. So there's only about 70 square feet of mitigation planting required, but um, they're doing a lot of native planting in addition to the mitigation up the two sides and the uh, the vegetation uh, restoration on the bank itself, which um, Nick will get into in, in a moment. And just, I'll just say the last thing that we have dry wells uh, for the, uh, the roof runoff down here. There are a couple of uh, stone, it's mentioned in the narrative, a couple of stone steps through here and uh, <clears throat> the Alphans didn't want them anymore. So it, this it, uh, will just, the lawn will just slope down around the corner to this, um, to this, to the top of these steps, which go down to the pier. Um, the septic upgrade is just a single three foot wide trench uh, parallel and parallel to the street line. And we are requesting a, uh, a um, let's go to the uh, uh, Board of Health for a variance. Um, actually, I think it might just be a local upgrade approval uh, to come closer to the uh, the street line uh, than, than what is normally required. And it is only 95 feet from the high water, but it's a, uh, a better septic system in that it spreads the effluent, effluent out over a, a longer, a longer uh, stretch of water uh, rather than having it all concentrated in one location as on the existing septic system. And there is still 10 feet of clearance above the groundwater. I think uh, unless you have any specific questions about this, I'll probably take my screen down and uh, have uh, Nick talk about the uh, the planting they're doing. Thank you, Tom. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Nick Crawford from Crawford Land Management. <clears throat> um, bear with me for a second. I don't typically share my screen, but there we go. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. All right. So um, it's a very fairly stereotypical uh, restoration slash mitigation plan. Um, the restoration area consists of almost exactly 2,000 square feet, just over. 
um, between, like Tom said, an existing retaining wall and the revetment down below. Um, <clears throat> that area is uh, comprised of almost entirely invasive and or non-native species. Um, like Tom said, there is a, a small stand of sumac to the right-hand side of the property um, as you're looking at the water. Um, so in order to revegetate the area, we have proposed, um, just for numbers sake, uh, 53 large shrubs and 60 um, medium to small size, small size shrubs along the existing stairway. Um, just to put that into perspective, since it's only 2,000 square feet, uh, 53 large shrubs would be almost exactly six feet um, or so, I'm sorry, six and a half feet on center in that area. <clears throat> and with the addition of the 60 small to medium sized shrubs along the staircase edge, that brings it up to four and a half feet on center for the entire area that's being restored between the revetment and the small retaining wall that kind of uh, serves as the perimeter to the existing lawn area. Also, as Tom had mentioned, um, the proposed landscape is nearly entirely native with the exception of some, I believe, uh, uh, Annabelle hydrangeas that are out in front of the house towards the road. Um, there's also 70 square feet of mitigation. Um, that mitigation is comprised of, since it is only 70 square feet, uh, sorry, just I wrote all this down obviously um 10 shrubs to fill in the 70 square feet and in addition to that there is a uh what's labeled on tom's plan is the topless cherry and a um, black oak that are closer towards the road um that would uh necessitate removal <clears throat> for the installation of the upgraded septic system and in response to that we're replacing those with uh Two, uh, sorry, two one and a half inch to two inch caliper um, red oaks, which are in the same family as the black oak, and three um, large viburnums in close proximity to the area where those are being removed. Um, and I, I think that about sums it up uh, between the restoration notes that are on the plan. We are, uh, you know, proposing annual monitoring reports to make sure that the area naturalizes the way we are anticipating it will. And uh, with that, I'll open it up to, to any additional questions on anything I can answer. Thank you, Nick. All right, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, a um, couple of things. Tom, on your or on your plan, there's a few elements you need to add to the um, to the existing conditions part of it. Okay, the walkway. There's a walkway, a front we, walk, and yeah. I have this, I have on the existing conditions. You have any like existing conditions? No. You know, if you're just going to go back and add that walkway to the existing conditions for me, please. I have the front walk on the plan, or unless I'm missing something. I don't see. Oh, it's part of the driveway. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So maybe. Um, oh, and I see the other one. Okay. Sorry about that. I missed that. Tom. Um, and then the other um, questions, I think, or um, the other comments are to Nick and the planting plan, Nick. We need to change the um, notes on the plan for the monitoring because it kind of implies you're going to be planting them this year. So that's not possible. And then... Um, we have a lot of Carolina roads again, so we'd like to see a little um, that replaced with some babe, more bayberry and beach plum and not the, the Carolina roads because you get 60 Carolina roads out there. And the more and more we see these plans, 
the more our coastline is just going to be dominated with Virginia and Carolina Rose. So I'd like to see it a little bit more, um, a little bit more the the beach plum and the bayberry in there, something that you'd normally find along that coast. All right, maybe we can um, reduce the the width of the small to medium sized shrubs along the existing stairway. Um, right now, it's shown at less than uh, I believe those are drawn at three feet on center and they're overlapping, so it's probably give or take five ish feet to either side of the stairway. If we reduce that, you know, by by half and just had us, you know, kind of one sh one row of small shrubs along the stairs, would that be amenable instead? Yeah, as long as we're 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 replacing the the material with additional bayberry and beach plum, that's fine. Yeah, th that's yeah. fine. I just want to make sure that the stairway doesn't get kind of overgrown and turned into. No, I, I understand that. That's fine. Yep. If you wanted to line the stairway with the rows, I'm not not too, you know, I don't mind that. But I'd like okay. to see the other species beefed up a bit. And then okay. the only other question or comment we had is um, there seems to be two additional floats on that dock that aren't on that chapter 91 license. So Tom, can you speak to that? Um, I can't, I can't answer that. I'd have to look at the, uh, I'd have to look at the license plan and compare it. Okay. Um, because that, those floats will need to be removed if they're not permitted or licensed. Um, so um, that's going to be an issue. I don't know if the applicant can speak to them about those floats or not, um, but it doesn't appear that they're on that chapter 91 license. There's only one. There was, uh, there was two at one time. We got rid of one of them a couple of years ago. This is Paul Alphen. I'm the one of the Alphen family. The, uh, the, I sent the chapter 91 license to Tom yesterday. And once he has a chance to look at it, um, I'm sure he'll get back to you regarding uh, the necessity of the other float. The other floats tied to the dock. It's not mechanically attached to the to anything. It's just it's like a boat and, and for holding our kayaks. Well, all those floats are do need to be permitted and licensed. They do show up in the um, 2020 aerial, so. Um, it hasn't been that long ago. And if you give me one second, I can look in this year's aerial. So the, they do need to be removed or properly permitted if they can be. Um, I can't have extra floats out there. So that'll that most likely is going to be a condition before the start of work that those that that take place. And that's all we have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Newton, do you have anything to add? I just had a simple question for Nick, and I apologize if you already spoke to this, but is that uh, sumac colony, is that salvageable, or is that going to be removed as well? Um, I think at the kind of worst-case scenario, depending on what it looks like after the invasives are removed, at the, the very least, it would be, or at the very most, I should say, it would be flush cut and allowed to, to kind of okay. regrow in that area. Um, but until we, to be honest, I haven't been on, on site for a little while, so I can't answer the question 100%, but if it is sal salvageable, um, you know, they, they would be intended to remain. Yeah, I was, you know, <clears throat> just seeing that it's successfully established there it has an intact root system you know it would make sense to me that if you're able to keep it that'd be great and then we'd also be able to reduce the amount of restoration plantings you have to do right but, yeah presumably if we can it, it, once we get the invasives out of there if it's so leggy it looks like it's going to fall over and break the next time a breeze blows by um then we'd we'd uh we'd flush cut it and just allow it to regrow okay thank you all right. Steve, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a question about the shed, but it was answered by Mr. Bunker in his presentation. That was the only question I had. All right. Peter? 
No questions. Pat? No questions. Maury? Um, I just had a couple. Um, I did the calculations, and I know that we usually stick with the three gallon, three foot on center. And I'm looking at this, and it's pretty far apart, a lot of the plantings. It's almost 2,300 square feet. And there's out of the 93 plants, 51. You know, I'm glad that Jen doesn't, she agrees with me with a uh, Rosa Carolina, it was a kind of overkill. But I'm, you guys know how I feel about sweet fern. Um, so in the um, mitigation area, the whole entire front, which is where the lawnmower loves to run over, is sweet fern. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see that woody indigenous and not sweet fern. And what kind of fence? I'd like a little, a little more density, actually, on that coastal bank because it's, you know, quite steep. And it's right now it's fully vegetated. And I'm not looking at this plan from other ones that I've seen um, that has the density that we usually require. And the fence, I don't know. They have not described what it is. Is it stockade, split rail, chain link? It, the current fence is stockade, and we plan to replace it with a stockade fence. So the stockade fence was a permanent fence originally? I, I think the stockade fence predates me. I, I don't know. We've owned the property for 27 years, and um, it's been there. It's been there. Okay. All right. So I, I'd like to see a little more augmentation because there's an awful lot of fern. That's all. Thank you. All right. Kevin? No questions, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, Tom, did you guys apply for the Board of Health variance? Uh, we haven't. I, I don't, I'm not sure we've done that yet. Okay. Well, we need that to close, Jen. Mm -hmm. Well, we need a revised plan for from the uh, Crawford um, to address Moore's concerns and, and staff's concerns regarding the restoration of the coastal bank. Um, so yeah, Nick, um, but I mean, we can always incorporate the variance once received, but Tom, when are you going to get that variance from the Board of Health? I'm sorry. I was looking at something. Um, probably within a couple of weeks. Okay, I don't particularly think you need the variance from the Board of Health to close, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's, there's no increase in design, for, correct, Tom? That's correct. And you're seeking the variance from the Board of Health for the setback to Child River? The uh, Child River and the, the front, the street line. Okay. So the street line really doesn't matter to us, Mr. Chairman. Um, and he, they meet the regulations on our end from our um, septic reg. So we'll just make sure that we put a note in that there's a variance from the Board of Health and we'll have them send it over to us. Okay. Thank you. Courtney. I have no questions. Okay. Betsy. Thanks, Jamie. No questions. Okay. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Mr. Bunker, what are you thinking? Just have to see what Nick thinks he what time he needs to uh, do a little I mean, bit. We can certainly plan. revise the plans in time for the next hearing. So uh, I know Thanksgiving kind of throws things off, but so if we revised our plan and submitted it by uh, today, next week, which would be what the seventeenth, is that um, is the, it, Nick? I'm going to give you a little bit more time, and it's not you, but <laughs> the the first is completely off limits now that I've had to move who we did the first. So right. um, is, we're is, looking is at the there, 8th or the 15th. No, I, I'm fine with that, but is there any um, any way that it can be conditioned in order to pass it tonight or um, agree, about, agree upon a set number of, uh, 
additional large shrubs versus the other species that you're not uh, keen on or or just the revised plan. Well, what, what was your what was your square footage of disturbance on that bank? So uh, I know, Maury, you said uh, 2300, but at least according to my to the CAD file provided I did everything correctly, I got 2008. Um, so presumably if we have, uh, 60 medium sized shrubs right now, if we replaced half of those at a one to two ratio, so reduce the, the roses to 30 and increase the large shrubs by, um, 15, would that be amenable? Well, the thing is, Nick, is if you put it in our plant calculator and Maury wants three feet on center, 2008 at three feet on center is about 223 shrubs. So what I would do is I would come back between like three feet on center, or like four feet on center on some of them. And, and unless, you know, four the, the feet. Only con the only concern that I have is that these shrubs do at, at maturity are at least mm -hmm. eight feet in diameter. So planting them at three feet would, at least in my opinion, over. I haven't over seen an them. eight foot bayberry in diameter <laughs> on the coast, but uh, but I, I understand what you're saying, but I think you're going to have to come somewhere in between what, what some of the commissioners are, are looking for, what the staff's looking for. Um, and like I said, we make it really easy on ourselves. We put it into a plant calculator. I get what okay. you're saying. At four feet on center, I'm looking at 125. So you're kind of close to that. So okay. why don't you look at that? I really would feel uncomfortable closing this hearing um, without having those revisions to the plan. Um, All right, fair, fair enough. We can uh, yeah. we can take another look at it. And what was the uh, what was the filing deadline that you had mentioned for the? Next I mean, you can days? get it in. I mean, it's either we can continue to the eighth or the fifteenth. Um, we are getting kind of busy for for December, but um, this should go fairly quickly once it's once we can and we can meet with you next week at some time to talk about any revisions you want to do. Um, it should be fairly easy. So uh, any the obviously the deadline for the first would be the eighth, and the deadline for the fifteenth would the deadline for the right, eighth the, would be the yeah. first, Four and days, the deadline yeah. okay. for the fifteenth would be the eighth. So the first of December, um, we'll set up maybe a. Uh, a site meeting in the meantime and um, and get the plan you, revised in order to get it in just after Thanksgiving. Yep. And then you'll be on the December 8th. Okay. So Jamie, may I make a motion? Please. At the request of the applicant, uh, I make a motion to continue this to December 8th. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this until December 8th. Are there any other comments, questions, input? I have another, right. I oh, have another question. Another comment. Jen? Yes? Do we ask Tom to um, submit anything about the float, resolve the float issue, as long as we have, are going to have a continuance? Tom? Can you submit something to resolve the float issue? It, I, it, they don't appear on the Chapter 91 license. They do appear in the, the 2020, April 2020 aerial, and then they don't appear in any of the 21 aerials. So at least one of the floats is gone, but that other one will have to be removed as well or permitted. Yeah, we, we will give you an answer on that. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Is that good, Betsy? Yep, that's fine. I mean, I just... <laughs> So it would clear that up. Okay. They have to Good come visit on. us again. All right. So we have a motion and a second on the table to continue this till 12 8. If there's nothing further. All right. Betsy. Glad filter I. Courtney. Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Maury. Maury, I'm sorry you were muted halfway. Hello, Hawks Eye. Thank you. Pat. Harris Eye. Peter. Walsh Eye. Steve. And I. Thank you. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 12 8. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Allison, thank you.
Good night. All right. Next up, continued hearings under a notice of intent. First up, William Labarus, 354 Acapescat Road, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a garage addition with associated clearing, grading, and landscaping to install dry wells and to install mitigation plantings. Mr. Chair, ben? I'm, I'm going to um, bow out because yep. I'm not on the quorum. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Right. Chairman, I've promoted the applicant up um, to address the commission, and I can share my screen if they're not able to. Thank you. And if the board remembers, this is the one where um there was a, a a portion of the existing patio and a staircase that went from one section of the property down below the the um the um deck area to a patio we had pointed out that that patio and staircase was moving closer than the present primary structure um we continued the hearing so that we could go and, and look at the old plans um, because the, um, uh, as Steve said, it, you know, he was focused on a garage and then all of a sudden he was focused on a staircase. I wasn't sure if it was Steve or Peter, one of the two. So we went back, looked at it and, and the applicant when explaining what had happened was that the building commissioner as that original, original house was drawn, had a staircase extending out toward, towards the water. And uh, at the time, the building commissioner made them modify that design. So that's why the staircase doesn't exist. But had the staircase been built the way it was originally proposed and permitted, that patio and other staircase going down to the lower level um, would not be moving closer. So we provided that information to you to kind of clarify that record. Um, and I can share my screen so the board can see where the staircase you previously permitted would extend out. So here's the garage. That was the original, um, why the notice of intent was filed. And then here is the what we discovered out in the field. And then this is what was actually supposed to be built, but was changed by the building commissioner at the time. I think I got that right. The applicant wants to jump in and... <laughs> uh, yes, yes, that, that's basically what happened at the, um, at the last meeting and at the time that the building department had asked us to have the staircase not be contiguous with the house that it had to have a separation. So we didn't build it at that time and built it after. We weren't sure what to do with it. So we've, um, we've addressed that with added mitigation to cover the area that that staircase does uh, impinge in the A area. I'm not sure what else you would like, um, if you have any questions for me or anything you'd like me to add. May I make a motion, Jamie? Please. I'm gonna make a motion, close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Does anybody have any Chairman, comments is or there questions? a quorum on this? Yeah, it's all of us except Courtney, and he's gone. Thank you. Yeah. Any mm -hmm. questions or comments? All right. No, no questions. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Betsy. Oh, wait a minute. Stop. Stop. Hold on. I'm sorry. 
Jen, is there anything in the public chat function? Not on this project, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Sorry, I almost skipped a step. Betsy? I felt her eye. Matthew's eye. Kevin? O'Brien, I. Maury? Fellow Hawks, I. Pat? Harris, I. Peter? Walsh, I. Steve? Pat and I. Thank you. It is unanimous. We have closed the hearing. Thank you. Night. Thank you. Night. Chairman and the board. <laughs> good night. Have a good night. Next up, George Topulus, 83 T Ticket Path, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to construct an addition, reconfigure the driveway, renovate the deck stairs, and all the Associated clearing, grading, and landscaping. Jen? Sorry about this one, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant is requesting a continuance until December 15th. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion a second to continue this until 1215. Betsy? Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Hello, Hawks, aye. Pat? RSI. Peter. Well, I and I have a question. Is has this ever been opened? Oh, no, it hasn't, Peter. Peter. Okay. Steve. Pat and I. All right. As unanimous, we'll continue this hearing until twelve fifteen. <laughs> Bear with me one second. Thank you. Next up, Nicholas Pierce, 10 Pilgrim Path, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to conduct grading within FEMA designated flood zone. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am going to promote Stephen Cartwright up as a panelist to um, present his project. I see the property owner is in the panelist. Mr. Pierce, if you would like to me to promote you up as a panelist, please raise your hand. And he's raising his hand. So I am promoting Mr. Pierce up, who is the property owner as a panelist as well. And Jen, may I ask you a question? May I have a DEP number? Give me one second. I don't have that in front of me, but I can get it in about two seconds. That's one. Just, yeah, funny. It's empty here, but I figure it must have come in by this time. And Pilgrim Path, I'm not even seeing on here. Mr. Cartwright, do you have a DEP number yet? Uh, I've not received anything. It, did this come through? Because this is my first time on a Zoom with this commission. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are hearing you, Mr. Cartwright. Do you have a video? Um, I'm looking at a screen, but I'm not sure how to activate it. Uh, I was told I might be new to the sharing bit unfortunately and this is the first time before this commission so i apologize is there any way that you can share any of the information i've submitted already i i can share some of it mr cartwright the photos you sent this afternoon i probably cannot how about the that that's fine that's last minute but the the uh, the plans that have been submitted plans i can i can share those for you sir thank you so give me one moment so you Mr. did submit this this to DEP, correct? Yes, yes, I did. Mr. Cartwright, if you wiggle your your arrow, you down to the left hand corner, you should see it says video, and you can click on it. Hey, there uh, you go. There you go. Hey, the older guy with the glasses on. I'm talking about myself. Join the club. 
<clears throat> okay, well, one second, Mr. Cartwright. Okay, we do not have a DEP number for it yet, sir. And I would check with DEP because I am looking. I am looking back to July and I don't even see you listed on here. So you definitely do need to check with DEP and see what happened to your to your application because we won't be able to close this application until we get a DEP number because they assign all the file numbers. Of course. I'm okay. Take care of it. Thank you. So right now I'm going to sir, I'm going to share the supplemental existing conditions because I don't think that changed. It just has your arrows on it, and that's the latest plan. You um, actually, uh, the sub that, that's the most important plan, I think, uh, to me at this moment because it uh, shows the additional um, conditions that exist that I think are, have um, contributed to the uh, concerns of the, the abutters. Yeah, I know, but I think the other plan that you submitted shows. Okay, I have to. To blend them both. Rotate yep. these. The other plan showed uh, primarily the uh, Mr. Pierce's property pre-excavation and then post-excavation with proposed contouring, uh, and then I've supplemented it. The plan you're speaking of with the arrows on it, just to emphasize the conditions that I believe are. Contributing okay. to the so what I'm going to do, Mr. Cartwright, is I'm going to start with the original plans you submitted, which, which are pre and post, because I think those are important, and those what is awesome. what I had asked to be submitted to this board. Um, so just let the board know we did get a call um, from an uh, as an enforcement matter on this property because there was a significant amount of grading being done. This is at the very upper reaches of the flood zone. Um, and there was a concern by the neighbors that they were going to redirect the flood waters. So I'm going to share my screen. And so we instructed the property owner to stop work. Um, I was accompanied by um, Greg Frazier and Chuck Martinson. Um, and uh, we had them stop work and then had them submit survey uh, a survey pre and post because there was a significant amount of grading that was done behind the property um, and in the front of the property that was a concern to both the staff and uh, I believe the neighborhood. So with that, Mr. Cartwright, I will let you um, present your plans. Okay. Um... Again, good evening, uh, members of the commission. My name is Stephen Cartwright. I'm principal of RAS Associates and assisting Mr. Pierce in this matter. Um, the plans that you see before you represent um, results of the request by the commission as to addressing the work that was unpermitted. And I would stress that uh, through no malice, uh, Mr. Pierce was not aware that uh, the coastal flood zone was one of the statutory protected interests of the act. And uh, I was actually first involved with the project uh, earlier with a just a straight FEMA elevation certificate. And during the course of that, I had acquired a certain amount of information to actually our benefit that I had, that I was able to uh, create these plans. Um, I submitted the plans and then I've supplemented uh, this plan with the second plan that shows the uh, abutting property, uh, lot number 89, it's to the south, um, that the area uh, has been um, impacted um, by some of the activities on uh, our property. And when I say some of the activities, I went through a great... Um, deal to uh without trespassing on the abutting property because i didn't have the right to trespass um i was able to acquire a lot of information remotely uh with the new equipment we have and was able to put together a topographic plan uh representing the uh conditions that i think um are and have historically and continue to contribute to the the, the drainage situation that we've recently experienced. 
And I say say that in that um, Mr. Pierce's property, uh, and if you follow the existing plan, um, it was a fairly significant change in elevation from, let's say, the point of the garage floors, let's say, elevation 13.6, and then it goes up to as high as 20 feet in back uh, at Governor Bradford Lane. And this really did not uh, provide much utility or, or, or use to Mr. Pierce and his property. Um, so once again, without knowledge and without knowing that, that such work would be under the control of the commission, he engaged a contractor and they started some grading work and, and that's where we are today with the enforcement. So <clears throat> when I went out again to uh, acquire additional information as to the topography as a result of the excavation, then I added to it um, a, a design that I believe will uh, mitigate uh, several, several issues. Uh, improve improve the utility of Mr. Pierce's property um, with creating this, uh, let's say, terraced area to the rear of the property, rear of the house, such that he has uh, an area that's usable, more easily usable for his young family. He's got young children. And um, conversely, um, uh, taking some of the curse out of the front of the property where there was a bit of a steep slope at the front of the property. Um, the slopes that we've proposed uh, are, are gradual slopes in the rear. There are one to four slope, which is a very reasonable, acceptable slope. And in the front, they're even flatter than that. Um, what I would like to bring out is that Mr. Pierce's property consists of um, uh, your, your normal your residence and downspouts, et cetera. Uh, he has a stone driveway and uh, what is what I found during the additional search survey that the uh, it's my belief, and if you look at the supplemental plan, which is not up quite yet, um, it's my belief that the subdivision uh, roadway design actually was deficient in that the roadway runoff doesn't appear to reach the catch basins that are in front of uh, Mr. Pierce's property and across the street as well. This is further um, impacted by the grading that's taken place on the abutting property and the significant increase of the impervious area on the abutting property. Um, although I didn't acquire data on the, for the survey for the rural property, I've submitted quite a few photographs that I think um, will be available to the commission, but I wanted to bring out that the abutting property is also in a flood zone and a, after a review of the records at the Registry of Deeds, I was unable to find any order of conditions or certificate of compliance for the improvements on the adjacent property, which I believe have added to the problem of the flooding or, quote, the historic flooding in this area. Um, I th well, thank you very much for bringing up the second plan. Um, the, when you look at the, 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 the drainage flows, um, major, a, a lot of the roadway drainage from Colonial Way and Pilgrim Path actually don't find their way to the catch basins, but they actually uh, diverted into uh, the property of number four, as well as um, uh, Mr. Pierce's property. Now, um, Mr. Pierce is looking to uh, lessen the slopes um, and, and we've, we're proposing that any and all uh, material disturbed will be stabilized uh, with loam and seed. And then to the rear of the property, uh, there's a, uh, up on Governor Bradford, there had been a row of um, rubber that Mr. Pierce had, had installed. Uh, I, again, uh, uh, what I would stress is that, uh, and staff had, had brought this up in the report, um, that this is this is a private road, um, and uh, we would obviously uh, take into um, um, consideration the comments regarding staff. Uh, but what I would like to uh, comment on is that the um, 
um, the staff's comment about returning the property to the pre-existing prior to excavation grade. Um, on the plan that's up in front of you now, if you look on the property of Mr. Pierce, which is lot number 90, uh, you see a, a red dashed line. And I've indicated that line is the limit of, or let's say the toe of the disturbed area that Mr. Pierce has accomplished, uh, uh, created. Um, anything from that red dashed line to the property line is existing uh, uh, overground now because the lawn's not been mowed, but a, a side, not side, but grassed area. And during the uh, enforcement action, Mr. Pierce had had his contractor install a, a uh, cylindrical hay bale with silt fencing. And uh, what I have observed, and you'll see in some of the photographs, and I know the commission have photographs presented on behalf of uh, the abutter. But I, when I was out there taking photographs, I, I noticed that there was an area of the silt fence that surprisingly one area had been breached and um, it appeared quite violently breached. And, and when, I, when I say that in that the, it's, I am conceding that the runoff, there is runoff from Mr. Pierce's property. Um, what I would suggest that in this recent storm events and such, that the, 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 the runoff from his property, of course, did reach a certain portion of the runoff reached this lower area. But what is evident in, in some of the photographs, there was, there's only one small area of, uh, let's say, erosion that occurred on Mr. Pierce's property in the vicinity of that small short retaining wall. And um, I, I, was, I was quite shocked when I, when I saw the photographs of the abutter where there was a ponded area. But then I started looking at the, the um, conditions that exist on the abutting property where all of the roof leaders drain to this area, uh, the significant patio pool area, all drain to this area. And furthermore, in, in, in addition, the, uh, the abutting property has a luminous uh, paved driveway, which obviously is, is running off as well. Um, unlike Mr. Pierce, Mr. Pierce has a stone driveway and uh, it's my belief that um, obviously there has been some impact by the ponding, but I don't believe it can be all attributed to the work that's been done on Mr. Pierce's property. And what we would like to do is to um, uh, utilize the, the, the design that, that I proposed along with sound practices and, 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 and obviously any uh, conditions that the, the board would issue and to resolve the situation in a reasonable and, and timely manner. Um, time is against us in this, uh, this time of the year. Um, should the decision uh, or decide to proceed with an order of conditions, uh, we'll, we'll have to make whatever efforts that we can make to stabilize the, uh, do the grading and stabilize the work um, over the winter time I don't know if, if if it would be done in a timely manner to get any winter rye or anything else to assist, but we'll have to accomplish some uh, situation um, mitigating factors to uh, to address this one off. Um, uh, one 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 comment I think I saw on an email from um, either Alyssa or staff. Um, on my drawing, I had neglected to indicate a small air conditioning unit, which is adjacent to the bulkhead on the south side of the house. And also there's a, a very small brick step uh, entrance to a doorway at the uh, northwest corner of the garage that I hadn't indicated. I think it's a very um, minor in nature. The, the AC unit is up on stilts. Uh, I'm not sure if that was uh, because of the flood zone or not, but it's it's very close to being at the level uh, being above the flood zone. But that would be subject to further uh, uh, checking. Um, 
other than what I've indicated and such, and, and I've probably been a little too wordy, um, I would hope that the uh, commission would consider uh, what we've proposed. Um, I would concur with staff that the uh, comments made by uh, the consultants for the building property as far as the uh, compensatory storage, sto storage um, would not apply. This is not an inland well, uh, flood zone. This is a coastal flood zone. And so I would concur with st staff on that. Um, in doing the uh, calculations um, of the of the grading as such, and there's also been some material removed, uh, some boulders and, and, and such, uh, there's an actually a net increase of the capacity of the, the flood zone such that um, it's my belief that the uh, flood waters, should they ever reach this high, won't, uh, the work that we're doing won't impact any of the abutters. Um, other than that, I'd be very happy to um, answer any questions if the board commission may have to the best of my ability. And uh, uh, you're probably tired of hearing me, but go, please uh, continue. Thank you, sir. Jim, do you want to stop sharing? Actually, I, I want to continue or sharing for one minute, Mr. Chairman, just to, so the, the just so the plan, the, the board understands. So this is the neighbor's property. This is that low area right there. On the plan to the left, and I know you all can see my little cursor, this is what was existing. Uh, on the, the shared plan, if I may, with the red arrows, that shows the abutting property, uh, the topography, uh, which is- No, existing. I know, but I'm at, I'm at the existing, pre-existing, pre-excavation and other plans. Okay. If you I go to the right, um, if the commission is looking, the dotted lines on this plan are what was created with the unpermitted excavation. So um, if you look at the 14 over there, this grade was pushed up and everything. And then they're proposing additional grading out there, which is the, the solid lines um, along with this rock wall. I'm going to stop sharing at this point. Um, Mr. Cartwright did submit a number of photos um, that we forwarded to the board that came in around four. Very late this, very late this afternoon. My yeah, apologies. very late this afternoon. We have not had time to analyze those at all. Understood. Understood. Um, we are. Um, I know there's a number of neighbors that may want to to speak, but we we are concerned with the flooding of the neighboring property. Now the flood zones did change. In 2014, so there may not be an order of conditions for the neighboring property for the pool and other impervious surface because I don't know what the flood zones were in that area before 2014. We all know they changed. They could they could have been outside the flood zone and quite possibly did not need an order of conditions from I, the court. I don't if, know that information. If I if I may, I did research that and the area uh, of the abutting property was in the flood zone always has been in the flood zone. And uh, it, it was a different datum, but the uh, difference between the two datums is uh, not linear, but it's uh, not that significant in this area. Um, so um, it's clearly depicted on the FEMA uh, plans under the historical. Um, <clears throat> well, Mr. Matt. Cartwright, we're not, we're not here to discuss the property next door. We're here to discuss what happened and occurred on your client's property and not try to, to shift the blame or, or shifting the blame. It to the neighboring property. Let's focus on what, what occurred on, on your name, on your client's property and how to address that. What we're thinking about it. Um, I was only suggesting if I may, that when I first uh -huh. visited the property in January, or February, whatever it was, uh, that the area was already soggy and wet and it's been historically, per the Butters consultant, historically flooding. And I was commenting why I believe that is the case. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to, to you know, keep this, um, you know, we want to keep it focused. 
Um, so I guess, Mr. Chairman, that's all we had. It was, you know, I had consulted with you about whether or not how we wanted to approach this. We decided to have them file a notice of intent to 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 um, remedy remedy the grading out there. Obviously, there is a big concern that we've heard from the neighborhood um, on the impacts of the grading. Um, and um, here we are. So our our recommendation would be to return the grades as much as possible to to the pre-excavation grades um, um and that that's and that uh i think that was it other than that just to um shift that row of evergreens that looks like they're now off their actual property and into the road layout although it is a private road and they uh, own the fee, fee as well. Mr. Cartwright, please don't yeah. interrupt. My apologies. Yeah, thank you. Every right. chance you'll get another chance. Thank you. We're aware of the fee interest in a private road. Um, we, we understand that. But just a, as a matter of, of course, we just said it would probably be more appropriate to put the evergreens on, on their actual property. Um, that said, Mr. Chairman, um, the abutting property owner did hire a consultant to review that. Um, that gentleman is in the audience with his hand raised, so I'm sure he would like to address the board as well. Um, but we did check with DEP just to double check to make sure I was correct. And um, this is a land subject to coastal storm flowage issue. Um, so he, if he'd like to address that, that's fine. That's all we have. Okay, Mr. Newton. Uh, nothing at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. All right, Maury, we're going to start with you. Um, I Maury, you're muted. Muted? Okay. Unmuted? There you go. Good. You're Sorry. Good. I, I have been away so long, I don't know how to do this. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I went out there and, you know, obviously there's a lot of great issues going on. Um, soil concerns, a lot of clay, no drainage, uh, no dry wells. Um, I mean, you can point fingers either way. The, the other house has hardly has so much impervious surface, but that's not the point here. The point is, is this is a project in front of us. Um, it needs to have, um, first of all, I'd like to see some more um, erosion control out there. Um, because I don't think this is going to get remediated right away. And if it doesn't get um, permitted and stuff uh, all winter long, that's just going to become a real issue. So starting there, we still don't have a DEP number. Um, and that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Pat? No questions at this time. Okay. Peter? No questions. Steve. No questions. Betsy. I'm a, I'm a little bit unclear. So are we, the plan in front of us shows for additional grading? Correct. To keep the grading done and do additional grading. In the front and in the back. Yeah, okay. Let me share my screen again, Bats. So this is the original grading right here. Right. Here's Correct. your contour. Here's your 12th cook contour. Here's your flood zone contour 15, 14. And then it goes and then it rises quickly in the back. But the flood zone is at 15? Correct. Okay. So what happened is they they bumped this 12 foot contour out. They bumped the 10 one out, creating this. So over here, this 10 foot contour came up, came bouncing over here. Mm -hmm. And then in the back, they actually put more of the property in the back in the flood zone by pushing this 14 foot contour on the pre-excavation side pushing that back. You see how it curves now? That's when they stopped. They want to now excavate out this. So this two foot, 16 is going to go to 14. So more excavation out to create this 
flat area in the back. Okay, so my question is. Do you want me to keep this up, Betsy, or stop sharing? Yeah, keep it, keep it up for a second. Sure. To, go from, to go from the left to the right to what they were trying to do mm -hmm. with the 10 and 12, they had to add fill? Is that correct? Mr. Cartwright, do you know what they did? I think they just moved yeah. it around the site. They were in the process. That is correct. No, no fill has been added to the site. It was taken out of the back and, and uh, to Mr. the extent. Mr. Pierce, you need to identify yourself for the record, please. Sorry, Nick Pierce, okay. uh, property owner. Oh, uh, so you took it. That, so that was my question. So you took it out of the back. Correct. And put it in the front. And so I just, so now I'm circling back. So Jen, your recommendation is that they restore it the way it was? Well, our recommendation, like there is a lot of concerns from, from the neighborhood that this is increasing flooding. And I, I mean, really, I don't know a lot about this neighborhood, so I don't know what the flooding patterns were before, um, but um, regulations do not allow you to divert you know, flood waters or storm water onto an adjacent property. So if they can prove that they're not diverting flood waters or storm water to an adjacent property, it would be fine. Um, the back of the house, I'm not too concerned with. I mean, you put more of your property into a flood zone. Um, most people try to get out of the flood zone, not more into the flood zone. I understand what you're trying to do now that we see those pre-excavation grades and looking at our GIS topography, I understand it was probably a fairly steep grade in the back and that you wanted more of a, 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 a usable outdoor space or outdoor yard. I know you have young children, so I, I understand why you attempted to do what you were doing. Um, and I'm not quite sure I have too much concerns in the back, but in the front, I think you know, we're really going to have to look at to to alleviate any additional concerns. Um, but um, that for the board is it in a nutshell. There was there was the pre-existing grades. We have the existing today grades and then the proposed contours that the the um, what they actually want to 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 do to stabilize the yard and, and to to button up the project. Um, but I mean, our, our, our recommendation is going to, you know, try to at least put the front yard back to its pre-existing grade. Well, I'm they're going to have to, they're going to have to affect anything. They're, they're going to have to come back, right? Because they have no DEP number. Correct. And this is a notice of intent. Correct. Oh, you, there's a, Rob, Dealers also that just popped up is in the chat room also. I understand. Yeah, a chance. Betsy, can I stop sharing? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, you do? I'm so sorry. Okay. Anything else, Betsy? Uh, not yet. <laughs> All right. We'll circle back. Courtney. Courtney, you're on mute. We see you, Courtney. He lost Courtney, you're on mute. He lost his audio, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Circle back to him. Okay, we'll come back. Kevin. Uh, no questions at this time. All right. I mean, it's not our job to design this, but I don't know. Let's open up the comments, um, public comments, and then we'll come back to Courtney. Okay. I'm going to um, promote Timothy Power. He is the gentleman that provided the information for the abutter. He has had his hand raised, so I'm promoting him up to a panelist. Okay. Before anybody starts speaking, I'm going to remind any public commenting that it's you got to stay on point. Um, we're not addressing the whole neighborhood and everything, so... Um, just stick to the facts that we, we have, please. Mr. Powers has been promoted up to a panelist, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Again, my name is Tim Power, a professional civil engineer representing the, uh, the abutter next door at four, uh, Pilgrim Path. 
Um, we did submit a letter, which uh, sounds like um, some of the members and the agent have read. Uh, so I wanted to uh, touch on uh, just some of the obvious. Um, first, the uh, the neighbor has always acknowledged that that area specifically has been a little damp, has seen some uh, minor um, puddling and rainstorms uh, in the past. Uh, the reason for their concern now is since the area was filled, it's been um, exacerbated quite a bit. Uh, they're seeing, you know, maybe when they used to see three to six inches, now it's more regularly uh, six to 12 or more uh, and much more into their land. Uh, obviously, for, for flood zone concerns, uh, you know, filling in the lower area and making more volume in the higher area is, is sort of counterintuitive because the low area floods first. So to Mr. Cartwright's point that, um, you know, as flood wires will be accommodated when they get that high, uh, our specific problem is obviously when they're uh, low at the bottom. Um, also, I appreciate the agents uh, confirming that it was coastal. In my letter, I did refer to the necessary calculation for inland uh, flooding. Uh, I did, however, want to um, uh, direct everyone, and I'm not I'm sure no one has it handy, but there is a, a manual for uh, commissions to look at as in regards to coastal zone management. Um, and uh, on in the subject under land subject to coastal storm flowage, while there's not specific performance standards, uh, it does specifically say the commission should um, presume that the land has functions for storm damage and flood control uh, and consider whether projects adversely impact uh, these functions. So um, while there's not an exact technical criteria on how to evaluate this, uh, the commission is certainly well within their reasons to act uh, um, to uh, put this uh, grades back to where it was. As we said in our letter, we're hoping the commission will, will at least add a condition to the order that the grades be returned back to their existing um, conditions. In that front piece, uh, my client has told me um, a couple of times they really don't have a problem with what the owner is trying to improve in the backyard and improve their lot. It's not the work. It's just that the work in that front corner has uh, caused uh, undue harm to their property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Power. Thank you. Anyone else, John? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Rob Thieler would like to make a comment, so I'll be promoting him up. But I'm, right now, I'm letting Commissioner Bird back in. And I'm on a delay. Okay, here comes Courtney. And I'm promoting Mr. Thieler up. And Mr. Thaler has been promoted up to a panelist as well. You may want to start with Courtney because he's back and it looks like he's on audio now. Okay. Courtney. Um, I have no questions. I, I missed a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Is Mr. Thaler up? Yep, he is. All right. Mr. Thaler. You're up, sir. Good evening and thank you. My name is Edward Thieler. Uh, many of you know me by my middle name, Rob. Uh, I reside at 108 Colonial Way, Falmouth. I am an abutter and I have lived full time at this address as my primary and only residence since April of 2000. My public comment is framed in terms of a question driven by two concerns that I will describe. My question specifically, what is within the purview of the Conservation Commission to review a mandate as part of bringing this project into compliance with applicable regulations and bylaws? And can some of my concerns be addressed through this process or should I seek a different venue? For example, during the course of the work that began in April 2021 until the cease and desist order was issued, the property was deforested of trees and most of the shrubs. Relevant to that, I have two concerns. Deforestation and regrading of the property has potentially changed surface water routing. Shallow groundwater hydrology may have also been altered by removing all the trees and consequently reducing evapotranspiration rates, which may have changed how well the property absorbs and removes water. Surface and groundwater management on the property has potential impacts on neighbors and abutters. Deforestation of the property has potentially increased the vulnerability of adjacent properties to wind damage because the medium and high canopy windbreak has been removed. This is a concern for properties, including mine, downwind of newly opened space during the frequent northwest storm winds that we experience here. 
There is now an approximately 150 yard straight line of no canopy that extends southeast from approximately 14 Governor Bradford to 108 Colonial Way, including 4710 Pilgrim and 108 Colonial. Um, relevant to the comments that were made so far uh, this evening, I can also state with certainty that both lots 89 and 90 on Pilgrim Path have experienced regular accumulation of water flooding, if you want to call it that, in their front yards since we moved here over 21 years ago in April of 2000. It appears to me that the grading proposed in the plan dated September 2, 2021, would, in the absence of other measures, force surface water into adjacent areas, properties, the streets, etc. I would also like to address some of Mr. Cartwright's comments about stormwater runoff. During heavy rainfall events since the cease and desist order, I have observed and documented with photographs on at least one occasion, a higher water level on the 10, ten Pilgrim Path side of the black sediment retention fence that the applicant installed this summer. That suggests to me that there is a lot of water that exits 10 Pilgrim Path to 4 Pilgrim Path and elsewhere. I would also add that prior to FEMA's 2014 firm, the streets of this neighborhood were not on the prior firm, which to the best of my knowledge was published in 1993. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thaler. Jen, is there anything else, any other? I can address some of Mr. Thaler's. Okay. Um, so Mr. Thaler, you said there's a tremendous amount of um, tree removal on, and shrub removal on the property, correct? correct. That would be up towards Col, uh, towards Governor Bradford in the back. I know there was one big tree, I see it gone, but you're talking about up towards Governor Bradford Lane, correct? I'm referring to essentially all of the trees on the property. Okay. Pilgrim so Path over towards Governor Bradford. There are a number of large trees, oaks and cedars in particular, that were removed as part of this. Uh, prior to the cease and desist order. Yes. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to just quickly share my screen again. Everybody can see that. That's the near map photo, correct? Not yet. I can't see anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to hit share. All right. So, now we see everybody it. see this now? Oh, yeah. Pilgrim Path. Here's the house. There's a large tree in the front, large oaks and shrubs in the back. That's April of 2020. And right here is oh my God. Ooh. August 2nd of 2021. Near map is such a great tool for us. Um, so there have been a lot of trees removed. Unfortunately, um, wrong plan. Unfortunately, a lot of those trees up in this area, you can see the plan, may have been outside that flood zone because the flood zone goes this way. It comes up and comes down like that. So they would have been outside of our jurisdiction, um, I believe, at that time. I, I mean, I'd have to go back and really try to have Mr. Cartwright pinpoint those trees on, on his plan. Um, it'll be kind of difficult, but if they were up close to Governor Bradford, like they appear to be up in here. They may have been outside of our jurisdiction at the time. Um, but that said, a lot of the concerns you have, Mr. Saylor, are within this board's purview and and can be and will be can and will should be addressed through this process. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Other public comments? No uh, other public comments at this time. Okay. All right. Mr. Cartwright, do you have anything else you'd like to add or address? Um, I would chime in um, on what uh, Jennifer had mentioned about the uh, flood line. Um, when I first visited the property, uh, I did observe some of the trees uh, work that were existing and then uh, had been removed. And it would be my belief um, that those trees that were of concern north, excuse me, west of uh, the flood line uh, were uh, that, it, that in that, that they were west of and outside of the flood zone. 
So um, if the commission would so request, I can do my uh, best to approximate the prior trees uh, based on aerial images, imagery available. Um, but other than that, that was the only uh, comment I wanted to make about, about that. If there's any other questions, I've, please uh, feel free to proceed. Mr. Carr, I think some of your issues is I didn't see you even listed under DEP's portal. So I think you're, you'll need to contact the Southeast region and see if they received your, your application. That's we are going to need that number to, to close. Um, I would look at, at probably at least yeah. replacing some shrub material and maybe a tree in that front yard. It might help with the flooding and the uptake. Yeah, I'm almost done with this hearing and then I'll come over. And Courtney, go. you're not on mute anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. You're on mute. Um, and then... Um, you know, I'm not quite sure where the board is, but at least the staff's going to stand by, you know, at least, you know, trying to bring that grade in the front of the property back to to the pre-existing excavated grade. Um, so that, so um, I'm not sure how much time you need to, to accomplish all that. We are getting quite busy in December. Um, if you give me one moment. Um, and obviously you heard the concerns of the, the, the neighbors, um, Mr. Cartwright, that they're, they're, they are concerned with the, the, the removal of all that vegetation on the property. So you may want to address that as well. Oh, and how many things have I continued to the 15th already tonight? I'm going to go more. I think two. need to get some erosion control in there for the time being yeah. and additional erosion control like sooner which, than later which two betsy i thought i only oh, just one just t ticket path yeah so um to begin with mr cartwright we could continue you to december 15th that would give the board time to to review the supplemental and all the pictures you you submitted this afternoon and if you wanted to do a Zoom call with the staff, we could set that up and try to give you some additional guidance. Uh, that would be acceptable. Um, I'd need to think about how we can accomplish uh, the restoration in the front. Um, and did I understand that you were looking for uh, trees to be, you said the front yard, were you referring to the Pilgrim Path or Actually, the rear yard, as far as replacing the trees. Well, there was one large tree that was removed in the front yard, and you know that might actually assist with with um, some water issues in there. If additional plants were put in the front, so you may want to consider that, as well as is is returning that front yard to to the pre existing grade. Thank you. Would you Mr. like to anything Sh you'd like to add? I'm sorry, would you say that again, please? I thought you were addressing Mr. Pierce it. if he had anything he'd like to add. Sorry, the, the kids are going to bed. Um, hey guys, I just uh, I thank you for your time tonight and apologies for um, you know not coming to this uh, commission first. Um, we are very agreeable to uh, moving the front grade back to uh, to where it was. Uh, putting in trees, and we would love it if we could keep the uh, proposed grade in the back uh, as we've submitted. Um, so I, I don't know how much time needs to be spent on, um, you know, looking at the abutters. If we can all agree that putting it back to the original grade is the outcome, then um, you know we're, we're not going to fight it. We just would like to clean this up and um, do the best by the neighborhood and uh, for film. Thank you for that. All right. You want a motion, Jamie? So, um, I need a request from the applicant. Mr. Cartwright, would the 15th work for you to start? Let's see how, how much progress we can get on the DEP front. Yes, it's acceptable. Okay. Okay, at the request of the applicant, 
I make a motion to continue this to December 15th. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second on the table to continue this until 1215. Mr. Carwright, I would encourage you to talk with staff if there's any clarification you need. Mr. Pierce, thank you for uh, your cooperation. I'm taking the vote. Betsy? Uh, Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carl Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? I'm aye. It is unanimous. We have continued this until December 15th. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Next up is Oy. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, 86 Water Street, Woods Hole, Mass. For permission to replace the existing Iceland Marine Facility at 86 Water Street in Woods Hole. The proposed work will involve A, the in-kind replacement of the existing pile-supported dock, B, reconstruction and reconfiguration of the deteriorated bulkhead and small boat slips, C, installation of an autonomous vessel port, D, dredging along the facility's west berth, and E, site redevelopment, including demolition of the Iceland building and construction of a new waterfront building. Then. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until December 1st. Okay. Anyone? Um, make a motion that we continue to December 1st. Thank you for being second. awake. I appreciate that. <laughs> what? He said, thank All you right. for being awake. Half awake. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this till 12 1. Betsy. I'm recused from this. Thank you, I'm Jamie. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I should have known that. Otherwise, I would have made a motion. Yeah, I know. And that's that should have been the red flag for me. Courtney. Courtney left, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew's eye, right, Kevin. With us right now. Yeah. Kevin. Oh, uh, Brian, I. All right, take back that comment about being asleep. More. Hawks eye. Pat. Our side. Peter. Walsh eye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous, sort of. We've continued this until December 1. All right, next up, request to amend an existing order of Ooh. conditions. Looping D and Ming Zhang, 45 Green Pond Road, East Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order conditions for Mass DEP number 25-4676 to reposition the approved garage location and to modify mitigation planting areas. Then. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've promoted Nate Goshgarian up from Holmes McGrath to present his project. All right. How's it going, everybody? Thank you, you're up, sir. All right, thank you. You can hear and see me all right? Yes, sir. All right, yes. Uh, members of the commission, Mr. Chairman, permission to share my screen, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, before I share my screen, I think I'll just go over what's going on real quick. Tonight, we're proposing to amend an order of conditions for a project that I was in front of the commission uh, for about three weeks ago and for what was approved. So I think what I'll do is I'll go over the exhibit that initially was used for this project since the bulk of changes proposed are captured within there. And then I'll switch over to the colored exhibit that we're using for <clears throat> the submission to kind of highlight the differences since they're pretty minor in scope. So just let me know if you can see my screen. You're up. Okay, great, thanks. All right, so a little bit about the property. This is a uh, 45 Green Pond Road located on Green Pond. <clears throat> this is a residentially developed parcel of land, currently features a single family house, a, a deck, stone driveway, gardens, kayak rack, timber retaining walls, and associated landscaping. 
resources on or within 100 feet of the property include a salt marsh down here, the coastal bank, which terminates up here, um, and land subject to coastal storm flowage, specifically A13 and X. Um, so the changes that we initially proposed were two additions. Uh, this is the first edition. This is the second edition. Um, we've got our FWR zone A right here. So essentially two um, increases in impervious uh, area, which prior a three to one mitigation planting, uh, which we have detailed over here, uh, 333 square feet in zone A, 46 um, in zone B together. After they go through their multipliers, end up being 1,091. We've got 360 square feet of restoration plantings that are a result of introducing the garage in this vegetated area. So, and then we have our um, mitigation restoration polygon down here. And this is essentially exactly what I proposed a few weeks ago and what was approved. So switching over to the new exhibit, uh, like was previously mentioned, the, the main change is a five and a half foot gap between the existing dwelling and the proposed garage. So we still have our first proposed addition, which is attached to the house. Now we've got our detached garage five and a half feet away from the house and attached to that detached garage, we've got a small set of stairs right here. So those additions and impervious <clears throat> increase are uh, detailed up here. We went from 333 to 395 the A zone, and we went from 46 in the B zone initially to 12, which is a slight decrease. Since we're expanding the garage laterally, at least relative to our um, landward limit of the FWR A zone, we are uh, required to cut out a little more vegetation. That's why we get a slight increase in the area of vegetation to be relocated from 360 to 555 square feet. So those are the only changes um, that we're proposing. Uh, actually, the last change is this mitigation shape down here, which will help to facilitate the slight increase in the previous area. Um, that's it on my end. Happy to take any questions. Michelle, Thank you, Nick. My baby. I'm sorry, Nate. There we go. Ben? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, we don't have any comments regarding the project. Just Nate. Just going to slap your hand for a minute i've been instructed to remind all of the engineers stuff needs to be prior to the yep. <laughs> i i know it was an oversight I I oh we'll be getting an email from us sure. uh, we've just yeah, been well, saying thank you for calling in lately. Lately. I, I know it was an oversight to just you know this board is just a little particular and likes their stuff in um a week prior because a lot of them work they don't come into town hall that often they have to come in to get their new materials so it just makes everything easier so if you could just um try to do that for us with revisions that would be great sure got it um and that's all mr newton no comment mr chairman thank you all right betsy no comment from me either all right I just have a question. I don't, I don't think it's relevant, but I'm just curious, Nate. Is yeah. um, why is the garage being separated? The garage and house. Yeah, the uh, the motive behind that decision, I, I, I honestly am not completely sure. Okay, I'm just as curious. As I know just a preference of the client at the moment. Yeah, and normally you want them connected, right? I mean, so. Yeah. Okay. It is atypical in that sense. Again, it's it's not relevant, but. All right, Kevin. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Maury? No questions. Thank you. Pat. Pat you're no muted. questions. You're muted, Pat. Apologies. No questions. Thank you. Peter? No questions, Mr. Chairman. Steve? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. I thought you said Pat. No <laughs> questions. Right. It would be Mr. Patton if it was anything. All I'm right, Jen, is there any um, public comment? No public comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Harlow Hall. Harlow second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close this hearing. There's no other comments. All right, Betsy. Gladfield well, Dry. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Maury. Harlow Hawks, I. Pat. Harris, I. 
Peter. Walsh, hi. Steve. And I. Uh, it is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Nate. All right. Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you, Nate. Bear with me one second. All right. Next up. Continued hearings under an enforcement order. First up, Kevin and Christina Doniger, 59, Sherwood Drive, East Falmouth, Mass. Unpermitted construction of a patio and unpermitted reconstruction of a deck. John? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We reached out to the applicant to remind her her hearing was tonight. We did not hear from her. We understand that a proposal has been submitted to them by Holmes McGrath, but uh, according to uh, Jeff Johnson and Nate Goshgarian, um, they haven't written a uh, they haven't signed a, a a written agreement with them yet. We'll attempt to reach out to the property owner again. Um, so at this point, I would just say continue this to the fifteenth. So moved. But we can't keep kicking this down the road if they're not going to participate. No, I mean, this started at the beginning of August, and um, my patience is wearing a bit thin on this one. So um, we will attempt to reach out to them. I will call them myself next week. Carlo Hawks. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this till 1215. Betsy. Watch Aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Maury. Carlo Hawks, I. Pat. Harris, I. Peter. Walsh, I. Mr. Patton. <laughs> Pat, Adam. I. As unanimous, we have continued this till 1215. Jamie, may I ask yes. Jen a question? Where are you? Jen, sure. I don't have any I don't have any quorums on this. So are you keeping track of these? Or do you want me to just put it on a plain sheet of paper? I'm just putting it on a plain sheet of paper. I'm not keeping track, so. All right. We can always go back and look at the tape if we get confused. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I just have to dig out some <laughs> plain yeah, sheets of no paper. Worries. No worries. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Jamie. Welcome. All right. Next up under continued hearings under an enforcement order. William T. Dowling, Jr., trustee, Venus Realty Trust, 6 Scallop Cove, East Falmouth, Mass., unpermitted removal of vegetation within conservation jurisdiction. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we are continuing this, or uh, uh, re recommending continuing this until December 15th. The reason is, we, I think they have finally uh, done the survey for the property. We do have a Zoom call with Holmes and McGrath to discuss two or three enforcement matters before them that they're handling on Monday. And this is one of them. So we'd like to meet with them. And the probably we're going to continue it to the eighth with the other two, but the property owner told us today he was not available. So we're recommending a, a continuance till the 15th. So move Tyler Hawks. Second, All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until 12.15. So 12.15 is going to be a long night, folks. All right. The next Betsy. couple are going to be long. Yeah. Uh, Gladfelter, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Maury? Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Hi, Steve. And I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 1215. All right. Next up, request to extend the existing order of conditions. J.M. and Leah S. DeCouteau, 507 Central Ave, Falmouth, Mass., DEP number 25-4435, requesting a three-year extension. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, I've spoken to Matt Costa about this. 
Um, they already have a 462 day extension. Um, so I, I asked them to withdraw this application. All righty. Due to the tolling. Okay. That brings us to vote order of conditions. First up, Robert B. and Elaine M. Bailey, trustees, E. E. Lane M. Bailey, 2013 Revocable Trust, 132 Little Neck Bars Road, West Falmouth, Mass. Yes, Mr. Chairman, and somebody can help me out because I left all my paperwork at the office. This was that big. Um, <sighs> this one holds the record for continuances. Yeah. No, it does not. It no. does not. You no. actually checked? No, but I know one that does because I had to actually relive the uh, hearing today. I had to watch it for a particular reason, one of the last ones. And you had one that was continued for like over a year. All right. So no. Tell uh, Jen we're not uh, looking uh, for the invasive restoration project. Do you want to know the quorum? Please. Kevin. Betsy, Jamie, Peter, Pat. What kind of conditions? They did submit that revised plan with the updated monitoring information and all that that we asked them to do. So that was submitted to the office. That was what I was going to. Yeah, that was done. We didn't update it. Betsy, I'm sorry. Can you give me the quorum again? I, I yes. Kevin, please. Betsy, yep. Jamie, Peter, Pat. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one the one thing the staff does have concerns with, and I said it at the last hearing, was the potential grazing of those tubelings that they're using. Um, I think there should be some condition in there that if those tubelings don't don't take or are grazed and destroyed that those areas do need to be revegetated with with more substantial shrubs yeah I mean, that was herself she's never used the tubelings before and i'm not quite sure i'm convinced of their survival they're like this yeah you discussed that 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 would have that's part of the monitoring and then something has to be done i mean if if they don't take, then we need a we need a plan B. Yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, issue an order of conditions as discussed. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. Betsy. Blattfelter, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Next up, John Grassy Sr. and Diane Grassy. 23 Southview Way, East Falmouth, Mass. And I know I'm not on it. Oh, it's just now we're now we're down no. to four. It's kind of like the 10 little the the uh mystery. Yep. Agatha Christie. We're down to four. Betsy, Kevin, Peter, Pat. More like clue. Um this is the dock, the fence, the, the now the restoration of the buffer, um, and a kayak rack. So pretty much after going back and forth for a couple of rounds, um, the plan is to a point where the staff is satisfied with it. The dock was never really a problem. The fence, in our opinion, was never really a problem. It was more getting that buffer restored.